things you should and should not do on your first trip to Ireland. My Instagram DMs are constantly flooded with people planning their first trip to the Emerald Isle and they wanna know about tipping, they wanna know about culture, they wanna know about Irish slang and the Irish language, things that they should and should not do on their first trip to the Emerald Isle. So as an Irish girl born and bred, I thought I would fill you in on everything you need to know for your first trip to Ireland. Let's dive in with the video. So the first should not, you should not pack for the season. Let me explain. A lot of people presume that it is raining 24 seven in Ireland. However, that is not really the case. Oftentimes in the morning, it can be nine degrees and lashing rain. And then in the evening time, you can have 15 degrees and blistering sunshine. The reality is we never really know what we're gonna get and we often get four seasons in the one day. That's why I don't suggest you pack for a typical season that you would get in other countries. So if you're planning a trip in the summer months, of course, bring some summer clothes, but I also recommend bringing waterproof trousers, a rain jacket and tons of layers. If you still have questions about what to pack for Ireland, I do have a video that you can check out exactly on that topic. Okay, a should. You should come in the shoulder months. So many people come in the summer because they presume that that is gonna be the best time of year for the weather, but that's not always the case. I recommend coming between March and May or maybe September and October. There's a few reasons for this. First of all, the Irish children are still in school, so there's far less people going on staycations and it's nowhere near as busy with tourists. I also believe that this is one of the most beautiful times in Ireland. You get this like turquoise kind of color in the water and the cliffs are like a musky brown, which doesn't sound nice, but I promise it is beautiful. The next one is a really important one, so listen up. You should not, I repeat, should not say the phrase top of the morning to you. Nobody says that, it is a Hollywood term, and if you do say to an Irish person, they're probably just gonna look at you with a blank stare and just probably walk off. Next should, you should 100% check out some of Ireland's hidden gems. Don't get me wrong, the Cliffs of Moher and the Giant's Causeway are amazing attractions, but there's so many other beautiful places in Ireland that don't get nearly as much attention. I recommend spending some time in maybe County Waterford or County Mayo if you're looking to get a little bit off the beaten track and check out those beautiful places with half the crowd levels. Next, should not. You should not expect table service in a pub. So we do have table service in restaurants, but when it comes to pubs, you go up to the bar, order your drink, pay at the bar, there's usually no tabs, and you bring it back down to your table. And on that note, a next should is tipping. So this comes down to personal preference. It's not compulsory to tip in Ireland. I personally believe you should say a little thank you for the service that you get. We typically tip in places like restaurants, sometimes in pubs, with our hairdressers, a taxi man, but we don't tend to tip the likes of bus drivers. But you do have to say thank you. If you do not say thank you getting off an Irish bus, people will presume you're rude. Tipping is typically around 10% of the bill or you've rounded up you should not ignore strangers. So in Ireland, if you make eye contact with a stranger, it is very impolite to just continue walking on down the road. Usually we will smile, wave, say, how are you? Give them a little nod. Just some sort of acknowledgement of, hey, I seen you, I hope you're having a nice day. I really like it. I think it's a nice part of our culture. And if you adapt these mannerisms, you'll get on very well in Ireland. Next tip is a good one for people looking to save some money and that is you should drink the tap water. Tap water in Ireland, in restaurants, in pubs is completely free. You should not be charged for it under any circumstances. And also in houses and rentals, completely safe and tasty to drink. So if you're looking to save a few bob, drink the tap water. Obviously, if you are in a rental, ask if it's safe, but I would be very surprised if they told you no. The next one is an important and serious one, so definitely take note of this. You should not walk in the middle of a country road. This is something that I see tourists do time and time again, and it is not safe under any circumstances. If you do happen to find yourself on a country road, which is something that I do not advise, but if you end up in that scenario, you should walk in single file, wearing something reflective on your body. And if a car is coming towards you, you should be facing the nose or the face of the car. You should always be able to see the face of the driver and the driver should always be able to see your face too. 
this is the correct way to walk on a country road and it could save your life because sometimes the speed limits are 80 to 100 kilometers an hour and you know you don't want to end up in an accident or seriously injured and on that note just for someone who hasn't been to ireland before we don't have sidewalks or paths on our country roads so this is the reason why i'm bringing up this point if you're enjoying this video guys please give it a big thumbs up and a comment it really helps my channel to grow next one you should pre-book your accommodation this is an advice i really like given i like to be a flexible traveler but unfortunately ireland is an expensive country and the later you leave it to book your accommodation the more you will pay so i recommend booking a few months or weeks in advance next one you should not call an irish person british or from the united kingdom we're not either and we do not appreciate when we are told that we are also not living in the British Isles and it's just something that you should refrain from saying. And on that note, you should not ask people about Ireland's troubled past. Politically speaking, the island of Ireland has two government bodies. You have the Republic of Ireland, which is in the EU and is an independent country. And then you have the North of Ireland or Northern Ireland, depending on your persuasion, as they say in Dairy Girls, that is part of the United Kingdom. And Ireland has a sad and complicated history, but I recommend not bringing it up with your average day person because no matter who you ask, you're going to get a biased opinion. If you do have questions on that matter, I recommend bringing it up with a designated tour guide who will give you professional answers. Because the reality is everybody who lives on our beautiful little island is happy to see tourists come in and explore and enjoy how amazing it is. Now, there are a few things that you should know about the North and the South. So the Republic of Ireland is part of the EU. So the visas that you would need to enter there are European Union visas. And then the North is part of the United Kingdom. And because of Brexit, there might be different visa scenarios for you depending on what country you come from. So make sure to look that up before you plan a trip to Ireland. However, with that being said, there is no hard border. So you can drive from the North and the South interchangeably without having to go through customs. Another difference between the North and the South is the speed limits. So in the Republic of Ireland, we drive in kilometers per hour and in the North, it is miles. And then the last difference is currency. So in the Republic, it is Euro and in the North, it is pounds. That brings us on to our next should not. You should not withdraw a lump sum of Northern Irish pounds. The reason for that is you can't use Northern Irish pounds in the rest of the United Kingdom. So I know a lot of people who come over to Ireland and they're planning to visit London afterwards and it makes sense for them to withdraw pounds while they're in the North. However, that's not gonna work if you wanna spend that in England or in Scotland or in Wales. So just keep in mind of that and try just to use your card. Most places accept card anyway and you shouldn't really need cash. Next one, you should not just visit Dublin. We have so many incredible landscapes all across Ireland and they deserve just as much tourism as the capital. And if you're only here for a few days and you're basing yourself in Dublin, you should go on day trips. If you're here for five days, do at least one day trip. There are so many beautiful places surrounding Dublin that you can go explore. And I do have a video on the top day trips that you can check out. And I'll also link tours in the description down below. And to contradict myself a little bit, you should not try do everything. So if you're planning a trip to Ireland and you have a week, make a list of all the places that are on your bucket list and half that. You'll have a much more enjoyable holiday by spending more time in each destination instead of bouncing around from A to B and not really getting to experience the full attraction. Okay, so the next few points I'm gonna talk about renting a car. I know most people will rent a car while they're in Ireland. And on that note, you should not expect decent public transport. I wish I could tell you we have great public transport and links between cities and towns. And while we do have links between Dublin and major cities and towns, and then some other cities and towns, it's really not that great and it's really not that reliable. There's not really any way to get onto the coast in a timely manner and most of our attractions are on the coast. It's an unfortunate one, but a sad reality. <laughs> Hopefully it'll get better in a few years time. 
Another should not is you should not drive on the right side of the road. In Ireland, we drive on the left, which is not common in the rest of the world. But luckily we do have signs everywhere reminding tourists that we drive on the left. There will be stickers on most rental cars to let you know. And there's also paint on our footpaths before you cross the road to let you know, look in the opposite direction to where you're used to. If you are planning to rent a car in Ireland, you should be mindful that most rental companies will take a deposit and put a hold on your card. This is typically around 1,500 euro to 2,000 euro. So I do recommend having those funds available. It is returned to you when you return the car in one piece. And another thing to do with rental companies, if you are renting from Dublin and planning to drive out further in the country, Odds are you may end up going across the M50 toll. The M50 is a toll bridge that you have to pay for usage on the road. But unfortunately, there is no man sitting in a box where you hand them money or you put money into a machine. It is quite literally a scanner and it is really, really easy to miss. So if you're planning on using Dublin motorways while you're renting a car, ask your rental company how the best way is to pay the M50 toll. Usually they'll have measures in place or they'll fill you in on what you gotta do. And the last bit on road usage is traffic lights. You should be aware of how Irish people use traffic lights. This is in reference to when we are walking. I just want to clarify that, not driving. But Irish people don't have the tendency to obey the traffic light system. <laughs> we are big fans of jaywalking and it's just a reality. I don't think it's legal, but it's just something that we tend to do. And I advise as a tourist, not doing as the Irish do in this scenario, because the reality is we are used to the timing of our roads. We're used to our traffic light system and it's not really safe, but it is something you're gonna notice when you're here. Next thing you should not do is withdraw money out of any ATM. I recommend making your way to a bank and using that one, or there are bank ATMs that aren't actually physically attached to the bank. And usually our main bank is AIB. So if you use these types of bank machines, you're gonna have a much cheaper withdrawal fee. The next point is for anyone watching from the US. Um, one thing you should be aware of is, unfortunately, a lot of places do not accept American Express in Ireland. Not really sure what the reason is behind it, but unfortunately it is just the reality. And on that note, you should bring a travel card that you can use freely throughout Ireland. The one that I recommend is Revolut. I use it all the time for everything that I'm buying. And if you do make Irish friends, you'll be able to easily transfer money in between each other's accounts because it's really common here in Ireland. I do have a link in the description down below. And if you get a card and make three transactions, you get a free 10 euro. So it's a win-win situation and it's just a prepaid banking app. Next one, this is an important one. So again, listen up. You should not ask about leprechauns. You will not get a good response off Irish people. So just don't ask. That's all I'm gonna say about that point. And on that point, another should not, you should not make fun of Irish accents or how we speak. One thing that I get asked time and time and time again, and I know I'm setting myself up for comments in this video, but can you please say, 33,333 trees. And while it's funny the first time or two, when it gets repetitive, it can be really, really annoying. And yeah, the reality is this kind of tree and this kind of tree is the same thing when it comes out of my mouth. But what a lot of people don't realize or forget is that English was not always the first language of Ireland. And when we were learning the English language, we were learning it from people who were not native speakers. And there's actually no TH sound in the Irish language. And that is why a lot of Irish people struggle to say it. I personally cannot say the TH sound. I've tried time and time again, and I'm never successful. And for those of you who are planning on visiting Ireland for St. Patrick's Day, there is one thing that you should not do. And that is called the celebration St. Patty's Day. P-A-T-T-Y-S. It's not called that, never has been, never will be. And if you say it in Ireland, people are just going to be like, mm -mm. <laughs> It is either St. Patrick's Day or St. Paddy's Day. And they are the only two ways that you can say that holiday. But 
Come, let's grow crack. Next, should. You should bring an adapter. So this is the type of plug that we use in Ireland. It is the same plug as they use in the United Kingdom. Cannot remember what the name of it is, but you need an adapter that fits this style of outlet. And continuing on with the team of electricity, you should not expect there to be plugs or outlets in our bathrooms. We do not have them. We, it is not regarded as safe in Ireland and it is an illegal requirement not to have any electricity flow in the bathrooms. This is included in hotels and all that jazz. So nowhere in Ireland are you gonna find somewhere that you can plug something in to dry your hair or straighten your hair or shave your beard in, in a bathroom. Next one is one that I get asked about all the time in my Instagram DMs. You should not be worried about Irish slang. Irish people are very much aware that we speak completely different to the way people traditionally speak English. And you know, if you don't understand what we say, just ask us to repeat ourselves. Honestly, we won't be offended. However, in saying that, I know it is nice to understand a few phrases that are constantly being used. So here are the top ones that I can think of. The first one is sorry. So in Ireland, like the rest of the English speaking world, the word sorry is used to apologize. However, it also has another use and that is for excuse me. So for example, if somebody is in your way, an Irish person will say, sorry, sorry, sorry. And then if they don't understand, eventually they will say, excuse me. Another way that sorry can be used is to question something. So if somebody says something that you don't quite understand, instead of saying pardon, or I suppose, excuse me again, you'd be like, sorry, like, sorry, question mark. Like, can you repeat? Another phrase that we use quite frequently is to give out. And this is something that I always struggle to explain in plain English, and I probably will not give it a good explanation in this video either. But an example of this is when I was a child, if I did something that I should not have done, my parents would be like, Laura, I don't wanna have to give out to you, or I'm tired of giving out to you. But they're not really, really cross or furious, but they're also not happy either. It's like a medium in between, and it is a phrase that we use probably every day in Ireland. Next one is your man and your one. So your man refers to a man and your one refers to a woman. And usually this is used if you don't quite know the name of someone. So an example I can think of, you're walking down a city street and you see a man going down the street going, like doing a chicken dance or something, something funny. And you look at your friend and you go, Jesus, what's your man doing? You know, it's something along those lines. And then if it's a woman doing a chicken dance, you're like, look at your one. Anyway, we use that phrase a lot and yeah, it confuses a lot of people. <laughs> and finally, probably the most used word by Irish people and that is grand. Grand is used all the time when we speak and it can mean multiple things, but most of the time it means okay. So how's your day? Grand. How's the party? Oh, it was grand, sure. Like, how are you getting on? I am grand. Like, I feel like it's just our response to everything. Everything is just, yeah, it's okay. But like, it's more than okay. Cause I feel like okay is like mediocre where grand is a little bit higher on the scale of mediocre. And next should not, you should not be afraid to ask Irish people for help. We are incredibly friendly and we're always looking to help 99.9% .9 of the time. So if you're lost and you're looking for directions, don't be afraid to stop someone and say, hi, do you know where this is? They'll point you in the right direction or they'll send you somewhere where someone else can help you. Now, it is important to be mindful that Irish people have the uncanny ability to stretch the truth. So if someone tells you it's only around the corner, that could mean it's a five minute walk away or a 25 minute walk away. Our timing skills aren't the best. So just be mindful of that. Another should not, you should not come to Ireland with bad manners. We are an extremely polite nation and we do always use our please and thank you and we expect tourists to do the same. Also in Ireland, it is polite to decline on first offer. Not really sure why we do it, but I will explain what I mean by that. So you go into your friend's house and she goes, hi Laura, can I get you a cup of tea? If I say yeah, she'll be like, well that's rude. So I'd have to say, no, no, you're okay. I don't want a cuppa. 
And then she'd be like, are you sure? Like, I'll get you a cup. And I'd be like, no, 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 you're okay. Ah, go on, just have one. Okay, I'll have a cup of tea. When the reality is, I always want that cup of tea. It's just impolite for me to say yes straight away. It doesn't make sense, but it's just the way we are. Another should not, you should not be shocked by swearing. So in Ireland, I think it's a lot more socially acceptable to use curse words than it is in other cultures. And I don't know, I feel like it's just not something we really bat an eyelid at. And we also have substitute words that are less heavy on the tongue, but still in some way are a curse word because of the manner that we use them. So for the F word, we will say feck. And for the S word, we will say shite. And these are far less extreme curse words and they're very much socially acceptable in everyday life. Another thing that you should not be shocked by is the Irish use of sarcasm. We are extremely sarcastic people and if we are sarcastic towards you, it might be strange, but it actually means we like you. So just don't be offended by it. It's just a bit of banter. And if it does get a little bit too much for you, just let the person know that it's bothering you and they'll try their best to stop. But reality is we just grew up like that from young children. We have very thick skin and we're just used to that kind of back and forth nature of taking the piss, I suppose. You should not let a door swing behind you. So if you're in a shopping center and it's a push and pull door, you should hold that for the person behind you. And also that person could be a good bit behind you and they'll see that you're holding the door and they'll start running really, really fast to get to it. But if you let the door swing behind someone, you're considered rude and yeah, people just give you funny looks and be like, why did you do that? So something to be mindful of. Something that you should be aware of is the Irish language is used a lot more in Ireland than you would expect. We don't speak it every day and it is a language that we're trying to get back into a spoken level with society. However, it is everywhere around Ireland. So it's used on our road signs, it's used on public announcements, it's used on you know our public transport and it's also used in our everyday language to an extent. For example, the word crack, which might be something that you've heard before. I have this lovely little cushion to show you and this says any crack. And I am not talking about the substance or the drug. The word crack in the Irish language means fun. And in this instance, any crack means any story, any gossip, any, like, do you have anything to tell me? Um, and crack is just something that we use quite often as a nation in our English language. And yeah, it's a great word, love it. I also have another little coffee mug to give you an example of the Irish language and this is Gurmila Mahogut, um, which means a thousand thanks to you. Um, and you would think it means a million thanks, but no, a thousand. Or thanks a thousand. Gurmila, thanks a thousand. And I feel like that's kind of something that we would also say quite frequently while we're speaking English. Like almost like in a like if someone gives me something, I'd be like, oh Gurmila, and they'd be like, you know, it's just I don't know, it's just nice. Okay, so drinking in Ireland. We are known for our drinks and having the crack while we have a bit of alcoholic beverages. So on that point, you should not spend all your time in Temple Bar. Don't get me wrong, I actually do think Temple Bar is a good place for tourists to go, have a listen to some live Irish music and buy a drink or two just to experience like the top tourist destination in Dublin but you're not really gonna find any Irish people there and you're also gonna pay an arm and a leg for a drink. So once you're finished in Temple Bar, I recommend making your way to like the likes of Harcourt Street or Dawson Street or Camden Street. This is where you're gonna find locals and look, the drinks are still gonna be expensive because it is Dublin and it's an expensive city, but a fraction of the price of Temple Bar. And on that note, another thing that you should be aware of is the term around. So around is when you're in a pub with a group of people, let's say eight, and someone stands up and says, I'll get the first round. That person will buy the round for all eight people at the table. And then the next person will buy the round and then it will just continue around, <laughs> continue around. It will continue on until all eight people have bought all eight people a drink. Does that make sense? But it's a really common tradition that we have in Ireland. And yeah, if you make Irish friends, it's probably something that you'll end up being involved in. 
And then the next two things are just things that you should try. So the first one is you should try a shot of baby Guinness. So Ireland is known for Guinness. But we also have this other alcoholic beverage that isn't actually Guinness at all. It just looks like a pint of Guinness in miniature form and it is a shot. It is not a shot that's going to make you make a weird face like other shots. It's actually quite nice and it's not crazy strong. There is still alcohol in it. So of course it is going to give you alcohol, <laughs> but it's not crazy strong and it's quite popular among Irish people. So you should give it a try. And if you want to try another thing that is like 21st century I don't know if I can call it culture, you should try a chicken fillet roll. This is the saving grace of Ireland and we swear by it for a hangover cure. Basically in Irish supermarkets there are delis and you'll go to the deli and there'll be a shop worker behind it and they will make you a fresh sandwich wrap or roll and a chicken fillet is a really popular thing to put in that. Another thing that you should do is check out the Guinness storehouse. So a lot of people will presume that this is a bit of a tourist trap but I promise it's not. I'm not even a big Guinness drinker myself, but I love going to the storehouse and taking part in the experience, pulling my own pint, putting my face on it and having a sip. And also once you're finished the experience, you can go up to the top to the gravity bar, which offers 360 views of the city. And it's just a really nice thing to do while you're in Dublin. I hope you're enjoying this video. And if you are, I think you'll really enjoy my seven days in Ireland itinerary next. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.